In this video, we'll set up some basic animation cycles in P5.js using the P5Play library. This style of animation is called sprite animation, and it's based on using pixel-based images, almost like a digital flipbook. So here in my finder, I've got two sets of images, uh, which I'll use to make two different animations. It's very important when we're working with animations in P5.js that our images are PNG images. So all of these are in the right format. And you can see here, I've got one cycle for standing. So those first seven frames, uh, just giving a little bit of motion to this character. And then a shorter walk cycle. And then you can imagine, you know, we could use some other programming techniques to move that character around as that animation is cycling. So let's jump into P5. I've got an example sketch set up here. A couple of important things that I've done already. I've made myself an assets folder and I've uploaded all of those images that I'll plan to use in my animation cycles. I've also made a libraries folder and I've uploaded the p5play library code. And in my index.html, I've made sure to link that p5play library. So let's go back to sketch.js. And I've also done a little bit of work here. So you can see here, I've made myself two variables, one to hold each of my animation cycles. I've also set up a preload block since we're dealing with pixel images, we want to run our setup commands in preload. That way all the images will be saved in the computer's memory before we start trying to do anything with our sketch. So my plan here is to take each one of those variables that I've set up and use the load animation function to bring in the frames that I'll assign to each cycle. So I'm going to start here in quotation marks because we're passing in a string and I'll begin with the name of the folder. So these are all in the assets folder. And then I'll type out the name of the first image in the series. So that's ghost underscore standing 0001.png. And now, rather than having to type out ghost standing 0002 and three and four, I can just jump to the end. So I can just copy this whole first chunk and give it 007. So load animation is going to be able to look uh, at the files in my assets folder and it's going to know that 001 is my starting frame, 007 is my ending frame, uh, and it's going to be able to pull out all of the numbers in between for me. So that's really nice and convenient. And we'll do the same thing for the walk variable. So I'm starting with number one and ending with number four. So that numbered ordering system is really convenient, especially if we're dealing with a lot of frames. We aren't tied to it though. So if we had a bunch of uniquely named images, we could absolutely type in every single one. It's just gonna be a little bit more work on the coding side. Uh, now in our draw block, we can display these to the canvas. So we're gonna do that with the uh, dot syntax. And now that we've set up the ghost walk and the ghost stand variables, as animation objects, we can call dot draw on them. So let's call ghost stand dot draw, and then we'll give it an X location, a Y location. We have the option of passing in a rotation value. I'm gonna leave that off for now, and we'll just display this at the middle of the canvas. So here we can see p5play is handling all of the back end for us. It's pulling out all of the frames in this animation cycle and just looping them continuously. And let's try to get that other one in there too. Let's say ghost walk. And this time, let's have it follow the mouse. So you can see with just a little bit of coding work, we get some really nice effects. Uh, these certainly have a lot of character, uh, kind of that hand-drawn feel and the motion really makes them feel alive. We can also call other methods on these animation objects. So for example, we have methods for stopping and playing the animation cycles rather than having them loop continuously. Uh, so maybe let's add a conditional here to make some changes based on whether the mouse is being pressed. So what I'm setting up here should stop that walk cycle when the mouse is not being pressed. 
Now, uh, I'm still calling that draw method, which will have that image follow the mouse. And then when I hold the mouse button down, I get the looping cycle. So this technique, of building in animations uh, with the load animation into an animation object variable is kind of the most basic that we can do in P5 Play. And it's great for exactly the kinds of things that we're seeing now. Simple animations, uh, individual cycles, maybe some basic interactions. We also have the option of combining these animations with the sprite objects that are also built into P5 Play. And that would allow us to cycle between individual animations. So for example, this character that's following the mouse, maybe when I stop moving the mouse, I want it to switch to that idle animation rather than the walking animation. It's a little harder to do that right now, but we can combine with a sprite and get access to multiple animations as well as detecting collisions. So we could test whether or not these two are touching each other, things like that. We'll cover those techniques in other videos, but for now, it's a great overview of quick and simple animations in P5 Play.